Hello and welcome to a special edition of On Stage. I'm Frank Delella. Coming up on today's show... Come look at the freaks. Step right up to the sideshow. Coming up, I'll sit down with the creative team behind the Broadway revival of this cult favorite, composer Henry Krieger, lyricist and book writer Bill Russell, and director Bill Condon. Plus... My name is Simon the Wiesenthal and... It's the true story of one man's quest to fight evil and hate. Our Donna Carger will be by to chat with Tom Dugan, the creator and star of Wiesenthal, a solo play about Nazi war criminal hunter Simon Wiesenthal. And... Okay, it's time for a short break, but up next. On every grave was planted a sunflower. It's a one-man show that tells the true story of Nazi war criminal hunter Simon Wiesenthal. Coming up, our Donna Carger will sit down with Tom Dugan, the creator and performer behind Wiesenthal. Stay tuned. <laughs> Critics and audiences are raving about Wiesenthal, a true story based on the life of Simon Wiesenthal, powerful and insightful. Tom Dugan's performance makes history come alive. Get your tickets now at telecharge.com. Welcome back. Simon Wiesenthal was an Austrian Jewish Holocaust survivor who devoted his life after the war to tracking down and bringing to justice thousands of Nazi war criminals. Nicknamed the Jewish James Bond, Wiesenthal spent more than half a century dedicated to the cause. He died in 2005 at the age of 96, but his story is now being brought to life off-Broadway in a solo show called Wiesenthal. The piece is written and performed by Tom Dugan, and the show's New York debut is being co-produced by Daryl Roth who's currently represented on the New York boards with Kinky Boots and the revival of You Can't Take It With You. On stage host Donna Carger is on vacation this week, but before she left, she got the chance to chat with Dugan and Roth about bringing Wiesenthal to the New York stage. My name is Simon the Wiesenthal, and welcome to the Vienna Jewish Documentation Center. I have been called the Jewish James Bond. However, martinis give me a headache. And instead of an Austin Martin, I drive an old Peugeot. And rather than guns, lasers, and rockets, my weapons are persistence, publicity, and the most dreaded thing known to mankind, paperwork. <laughs> One thing the 007 and I do have in common, however, overwhelming sex appeal. <laughs> Tom Dugan, Daryl Roth. Welcome to On Stage. Congratulations on this powerful production of Wiesenthal. Let me start with you, Tom. As an Irish Catholic guy, originally from New Jersey, what drew you to creating a piece about Simon Wiesenthal? I wanted to honor my father's participation in World War II. He was a decorated uh, a veteran, received the Bronze Battle Star and the Purple Heart. He liberated camp called Langenstein. And I grew up with the stories of what it was like for him as a 20-year-old to come upon these concentration camps. And uh, he also carried um, uh, shrapnel in his hip until the day he died. And I said, boy, Dad, you must really hate Germans, huh? He said, no. He said, I judge people by how they behave, not by what group they belong to. And I didn't get that as an eight-year-old. Years later, I was reading about Wiesenthal and his rejection of collective guilt. And a light bulb went off in my head, and I said, oh, that's what my father meant. Mm -hmm. Now, also, I'm Irish Catholic. And I married 22 years ago, my wife, Amy Opel. We now have two beautiful Jewish boys, mm -hmm. Eli and Miles. And so tolerance is something I live with every day in my own home. Mm -hmm. So a play about tolerance is a very comfortable place for me. Now, Daryl, you, you produce everything from big, Tony-winning Broadway shows to smaller, off-Broadway pieces. Mm -hmm. um, what struck you about Wiesenthal? Uh, Tom had been performing it for a few years before it came mm -hmm. to New York. Why did you want to be involved with this New York production? Well, much like Tom, I'm very interested in stories about tolerance and acceptance. And I think if there is a thread that goes through the work that I choose to produce and, and champion, it is that. And also, I feel very strongly about honoring my own Jewish heritage and having generations that have lived through this period of history not be forgotten and have young people learn the stories and, and know our history. And I also felt the story at this time was important to tell. I am concerned about the rise of anti-Semitism. And because this is a play about an amazing person who was so tenacious in, in finding justice, 
the, the angle of tolerance, the angle of, of, you know, doing the right thing and, and making sure that this kind of thing couldn't happen again. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there are signs in our culture right now that it could very easily happen again against any group of people. So from a Jewish point of view, from a political point of view, and just from a human point of view, it's just meaningful to me. And of course, Tom's performance is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tom, let me ask you, the, the play takes place in April of 2003. It's, it's set on Wiesenthal's last day at work yes. in his office in the Jewish uh, Documentation Center in Vienna. And he's talking to visitors about his decades of tracking down Nazi war criminals. How did you research the piece? And, and how did you go about becoming Wiesenthal, who in this piece is, is in his 90s, you're in your, your several decades. 53. 53, okay. Yes, well, what I have to do to, to create the character is, first of all, I'm not bald, and Wiesenthal was, but I shaved my head <laughs> to do the Very play. Impressive. And I do a lot of makeup, and I wear a, a, a padded suit. But the key to being able to do this show is, because Wiesenthal understood that the message had to get out always to the young people. And I was able to capture I think in the play, the fact that this man had an amazing sense of humor. And that was the key, because now I have high school kids, many, many high school kids come in to see the show, and they all walk in like, oh God, this is going to be so depressing. And they all walk out happy, laughing, so glad they've seen the show. Speaking of young people, you have uh, in the audience, you recently had, well, three generations of someone very important, Anne Frank's mm -hmm. second cousin, I, I guess she was, along yes. with her. Her daughter and her granddaughter came to see the show. And in the piece, you talk about how Wiesenthal was instrumental in tracking down uh, the officer who arrested Anne Frank's family. Carl Silverbauer. Mm -hmm. And the, the value of that uh, was because during the 50s, there was a movement uh, of the first Holocaust deniers in the sense that there was a whole lot of young people, teenagers, who believed that who were taught by their parents the perpetrators of the Holocaust, that uh, Anne Frank's story was made up. And so Wiesenthal's way of combating that was to actually find Carl Silberbauer and have him confess that he indeed arrested Anne Frank. There's a story of another uh, someone, a person you met uh, in the audience one time when you were performing in Beverly, Hills. Beverly Hills. You want to share that story? Back. One girl stood up and she said, did this actually happen? I said, yes, it's all factual, all the facts are there. I said, why do you ask? And the girl said, well, my parents told me that the Holocaust was exaggerated. And I said, now, why do you think that your parents would say something like that? She said, because my great-grandfather was Adolf Eichmann, <laughs> who was, of course, the, the, the architect of the Holocaust. Right, right. And the audience was aghast. But what did we all have to practice in that moment in that theater? The rejection of collective guilt. Right. This girl did nothing wrong. So everybody calmed down, and then we were asked, able to ask her a few questions. She didn't know a lot, but the, the, the magnificent experience of the real-time learning experience and the practicing, I mean, it brought history right here and right now into our laps. Dara, let, let me ask you something. Uh, in an interview uh, that you did with The Forward, this was actually uh, about a year ago, um, you talked about growing up in Wayne, New Jersey, where you were the, the only Jewish kid, and, and you said that made you feel very much like an outsider. Mm -hmm. How did that affect your work now and what you choose to produce and perhaps your, your work with Wiesenthal? I think it affected my, my being, not in such a negative way, other than informing my life in a way that uh, made me more sympathetic to people that are considered outsiders or are considered by society to be somewhat less than. And I actually take it as a strength in a way. Uh, my Jewish education was very secure. There was a synagogue in the town next to the one I lived in. And so, you know, I never felt as though I wasn't connected to my identity. But I think my taste in theater and my taste in storytelling has really been informed by that. And by the plays that I do, usually there's someone or a story to be told that is about someone that feels an outsider or is looking for acceptance. And I think it's also something that helps change the world. Yeah. Well, I want to thank both of you so much for coming in. Thank and you. it is Wiesenthal at the Acorn Theater mm -hmm. Off-Broadway on Theater Row. Thank you thank very you much. So Thanks much. so much. Thanks, Tom.